He's won re-election and heads into the new year with likely an uphill battle to win extra funding for his department from Republicans in the next budget cycle. I sat down with Democratic Attorney General Josh Call for his end of year look back. Uh, Attorney General, always good to have you on the show. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, I wanted to start, as we look back at 2022, one of the one of the things that your office has done that's generated a lot of headlines is the, you know, the review, the investigation into clergy sex abuse. And there's been some calls lately that perhaps you, you know, some accusations you haven't put enough resources to, into that. Is that something you see going into 2023? Do you want to allocate more resources? What, what would your, be your response on that? Well, we've been approaching this review the same way since it, it launched. Um, we have asked anybody who has any information about clergy and faith leader abuse to report to our office. We've now received over 200 contacts and we want information of any kind, whether it's uh, somebody who's a survivor who's reporting or somebody who has information about institutional actions. Um, with every report we get, we have multidisciplinary teams that are reviewing those reports. They consist of an investigator, a prosecutor, and a victim advocate. And each of those cases is being reviewed thoroughly. And if there's evidence that could lead to a potential criminal prosecution, that's given to local law enforcement, and there are now two cases where criminal charges have been filed uh, based on that work. Uh, but even where there is not a potential criminal charge, for example, because a case is beyond the statute of limitations, we still want to make sure to gather as much information as we can and potentially seek to um, have uh, credibly accused lists updated. We also want to put together a report at the end of the process that will summarize what we found. And we want to try to connect survivors to services. Um, we've been doing that throughout the process, and we're going to keep doing it, and we're going to follow the facts where they lead. This has been going on for a while now. Are tips starting to taper off, those 200 tips you mentioned, or are you still kind of getting a constant feed of them? The numbers have varied over time. Um, often when we talk about it publicly, a few additional people will reach out. We certainly got most of the tips earlier on in the process. Um, but we are still in the process of reviewing information that we've received, and we're still available to receive information. So if anybody does have information, please reach out to DOJ and, and contact us. People can report uh, in a few different ways, and, and we review every tip that we get. Let's talk 2023. Do you have any other, you know, you've launched this big review, big investigation. Can we expect another one of this type next year? Well, right now our big focus is on the upcoming state budget process. We have levels of violent crime in communities in Wisconsin and around the country in the wake of the pandemic that are just not acceptable. And uh, investing in public safety is a critical priority of mine. Um, there are a lot of ways we can do that. Uh, increasing shared revenue, dollars that go from state government to local government, is a critical step that would allow local governments to fund vital services like local law enforcement. But I'd also like to see investments made, and we proposed those in my Safer Wisconsin plan over a year ago now, and, and we're including those proposals in the budget as well, to make sure we're getting dollars to things like community policing, officer recruitment, retention and wellness, victim services, mental health crisis respo response, and reentry programs, among other things. So getting anywhere with the state budget involves some coordination with the Republicans who control the state budget uh, ultimately next year. Have you had any conversations with any uh, any of the Senate Assembly leaders, JFC, Joint Finance Committee leaders, any of them in the last month or two? We've begun the process of, of having meetings. I spoke recently to a Republican <laughs> member of the Joint Finance Committee, and we're going to continue having those conversations as we move forward with the budget process. And I expect that um, we're going to see a lot of support for public safety. We heard both Democrats and Republicans talking about that issue on the campaign trail. And particularly in the wake of the pandemic, and given the underfunding of our justice system we've had for, for decades in Wisconsin, um, I think now is the time. We've got a, a massive surplus. Investing just a portion of that in safer communities, I think, is a critical step we can take. Pivoting quickly, and this is something that at least earlier this year was kind of before the courts, but are there any new steps that you can take in 2023 in terms of undoing that lame duck ruling that kind of controls what you can do in, in uh, areas of civil enforcement actions? Is there any new action on that you plan to take next year? Well, first, we, we still are in court on this issue. As you mentioned, there had been some initial rulings in the, the cases that are being litigated, but those cases will, will eventually get final rulings and they'll work their way through the courts. So we're going to continue litigating those cases. I feel very strong about the arguments that we have. The circuit court judge uh, uh, determined that we had the better of the argument on, on the two issues we've raised. And uh, so we'll keep litigating those. I hope that the legislature reconsiders this as well, though, because for four years now, we've had this process in place, and it hasn't really served much purpose. It's, it's slowed things down and 
delayed getting resolutions and required more input from uh, different parts of the government as we, we resolve these cases. Um, but I don't think the legislature can point to anything where they can say that, that this has made a big difference. And so I'm hopeful that they will get rid of that process and rethink this, but um, that's going to depend on, on what decisions Republicans in the legislature make. Can you give me an example of something that was delayed as part of this new f you know, process that was put in place four years ago? Well, every resolution that goes before the Joint Finance Committee is delayed in some way because uh, under the old system, we could resolve those cases and uh, we could immediately go to court and get a consent judgment. Um, now cases have to go before the committee before we can get a resolution. So there's an agreement reached, but then there's a lag as we wait to get a response from the Joint Finance Committee. Well, what else can we expect from the DOJ in 2023? Well, we're going to continue working on vital priorities. Public safety is my top priority as AG. Um, we need to keep uh, funding our Office of School Safety so it can continue doing its important work. We've also got to keep working to fight the opioid epidemic, particularly with uh, the prevalence of fentanyl that we're seeing. We've held big pharmaceutical companies accountable for their role in the opioid epidemic. And we're going to keep working to bring dollars into the state of Wisconsin to support treatment efforts and diversion efforts and enforcement efforts. Um, we're going to keep working to protect access to safe and clean drinking water, protecting Wisconsinites' pocketbooks, and, and standing up for Wisconsinites' freedoms. Thanks so much for taking a few minutes. Thanks for having me. And we'll be back in a moment hearing next from one of Wisconsin's liberal back choices for the Supreme Court race.